I'd just started my Sunday run when a boy of about seven came hurtling past me on his bike, hit a curb and then flew sideways into a lamppost, folding him in half like a wet sock on a clothesline. I'm slightly embarrassed to admit that my first thought was, I wish I had my camera. And that was obviously followed swiftly by concern and I went over to check he was okay. I'd recently found myself in a bit of a photographic slump, but seeing that boy get obliterated by lampposts really made me think about all the possible things that can happen when you step outside your front door. An infinite number of things can happen really, and that's incredibly inspiring as a photographer. But sometimes we lose sight of the wonder of the world and find ourselves uninspired. So in this video, I'm gonna give you some ideas to get your inspiration back and fall in love with photography all over again. A lot of us live in pretty dull places. We can't regularly wander the streets of a city like London or Paris or risk life and limb trying to walk among the lunatics on bicycles in Amsterdam, for example. We have to make do with what we have, and often that isn't enough for us. We complain or find excuses, or perhaps not surprisingly, lose motivation completely to go out and take photos. But the beauty of having a camera is that it gives us a license to see, to explore, to make a photograph of anything that we like. Does that mean it's always going to be a good photograph? Of course not. Does it mean it's much harder to make meaningful work in a boring place? Yeah, absolutely. But to say there's nothing to photograph is not true. For instance, if you're a portrait photographer and you, maybe you can't find any models, you could approach strangers for portraits on the street. If you're a landscape photographer, see how many abstract photos you can take in the nearest park or woodland. And if you're a street or documentary photographer, try and go to a local event to practice honing your eye for moments. Brian Carlson is a photographer that lives in New York City, the mecca of street photography. And what does he do? He takes photos of trash, literal trash on the street, and his photos are brilliant. There's trash everywhere around the world, but he is an artist thought of how to turn that into something thoughtful and meaningful using his camera. The great American photographer, William Eggleston, took photos of abandoned lots, gas stations, condiments on tables. His photographs, spectacular. Ernst Haas took photos of oil spills and ripped posters, and I could look at those pictures for hours such as their beauty. The Italian photographer Franco Fontana pioneered colourful abstract landscapes, for example turning just a blue sky, a field and a cloud into a work of art. The point I'm trying to make here is that there are always things to be photographed everywhere. And the exciting thing is it's for us to find the photos, make them and then build a body of work that means something to us and then maybe will one day mean something to other people as well. I live in a pretty medium-sized town in the Cotswolds in England, which many people love to visit on holiday for some reason. On the surface, I used to find it dreadfully dull, but I've come to appreciate it a bit more the further along I've gone on my photographic journey. There's actually quite a lot going on here, a mix of social classes, the race course brings a certain crowd and festivity to the town, and there are also regular events, so yeah, I should probably think myself lucky to be living here really. The other day I was out in town, and on the way back home I noticed a seven-foot robot outside the town hall. It's not something you see every day, and of course I took some photographs. I didn't know what I was going to photograph that day, and actually I didn't really even know what I was looking for, but I went out with an open mind and I saw something worth documenting. Are they the best photos I've ever taken? No, but I was out and I exercised my creative eye, I tried some different compositions and practiced my craft, which is the key to being ready to capture the amazing moments when they happen. But it's also the best way of generating inspiration when you've lost it. Just get out there and see what the world delivers. When it comes to photography, especially street photography, being out there in the world is the name of the game. If you're out, you can take photos. The more time you spend out making photos, the more chance you have of serendipity. If you take photos of everything that catches your eye, over time you'll find themes that you might want to explore further. Or you might just realize you don't actually like photography and take up professional darts instead. When I don't know what to photograph or I've had a string of bad luck on the street or I feel my work and my creativity has gone a bit stale, I sit in my office, flop open a photo book or two and then within half an hour it's like I've had a mainline hit of inspiration. I grab my camera and head out the door. I can't say enough that if you don't know what to photograph, you need to look at other photographers' work, old and new. Look online if you don't have any books or go to the library. The more work you see, the more it seeps into your brain, the more you can get excited about the challenge of turning the mundane into the extraordinary. I've used this quote before, but as one of my favourite authors, Cormac McCarthy, has put it, books are made out of books. The same goes for photographs. The more photography you consume from books or prints or documentaries, the more inspired you'll become to go out there and do it yourself. You might get a spark of inspiration when you see someone else's work and it might just give you some new ideas to try it yourself. Not to copy them or rip them off, but just to be inspired and just try seeing things in a different way. Photography is all about seeing. A stranger with character or charm. 
an expression of love, a moment of fun, ripples in a river, a ripped poster, a reflection on wet pavement, a child smashing sideways into a lamppost. There are endless things to photograph. Photographers are lucky because we notice more than most other people, and because of this we see the variety of the world's poetic moments and lead a richer, more rewarding life, in my opinion. I love to go running, but sometimes I have to force myself outside. The motivation is lacking and the weather's awful. Running headfirst into the wind for mile after mile can be so hard to keep going, but sooner or later I come to a turn, the wind's at my back instead, pushing me along, and in that moment, all's right again. It's the same with photography or anything creative really. When you feel you've lost it, you can do two things. You can keep going or you can take a break for a while, but all you need to do is just not give up. Ultimately, what you choose to photograph is up to you, but there's a whole world out there and all you have to do is explore it, even if that only means walking out your front door and down the high street. With enough perseverance and curiosity, you'll find something important to capture and keep for the rest of your life. One of the biggest problems when you have a lack of inspiration though can be not having enough ideas, especially if you're stuck in a boring or quiet place. So check out this video next where I explore some ideas for how to make better photographs regardless of where you live.